So voice meter introduced VAIO extensions in the last update. So I'm going to explain how it all works and give you some of the best routing options. All right. So if you're not familiar, these are the VAIOs extensions for voice meter standard banana and voice meter potato. So, and what these essentially are is it's pretty much virtual inputs and outputs that act like hardware inputs and outputs. So it's kind of like the VB cable, but this is like an updated version. They work a lot better and they're easier to route. So let's get into it. You will have to either pay a donation for voice meter banana or voice meter potatoes. Personally, I think if you're going to go ahead and donate, I would definitely recommend potato because it gives you more options and flexibility, but that's me. So I'll leave that up to you and I will drop the links down below if you want to check this out. Once you've downloaded and installed the VAIO extensions, you'll see these new options pop up above your hardware inputs. So you'll see this one, two, three, four, and it's clicking them essentially triggers it on and off. And then you'll see the outputs for A1 through A5 you'll be able to trigger those as well. So, so we'll kind of talk through this and give you my recommendation of how I would set this up similar to how I would set up like the VB cable, etc. All right. So starting with stereo input two. So again, you're not going to select an input device here. You're actually going to just leave that off. Now you will need to rename it. So we'll use discord as an example here. I'll rename that discord. And all you're going to do is pop into discord. We're going to open this up and within discord, you go to voice and video and the output device. You're just going to go ahead and set it to that voice meter input two. So what that's going to do is now it's going to give you the option to route to that VAIO number two. You can rename this in sound settings. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but for the most part, once you trigger close this, once you trigger to here, you'll now be able to see it come through. So, so mic check, mic check. And as you can see, it is coming through this channel now without having anything selected. So what this essentially does is it gives you more flexibility and more options to be able to input some different programs. So for this case or for this example, I'm going to have discord and the next thing is going to be music. So on this one, I'll route music and I'm going to use YouTube music, but you can use Spotify. So this is a little bit different. So if you open up YouTube music, you're not going to have options within the app. You're going to have to go to the volume mixer. I can't see it's behind me, but go to your volume mixer. And again, you have to have your program open to be able to see it in here. So you just go down to YouTube, select the output, and we're going to go with number three here. So voice meter in three, and this is going into voice meter. So go back to voice meter. We trigger that do a little test. I'm going to lower the volume here first. All right. Yeah, and as you can see, the audio is now coming through the music there. Now, if you do have multiple music sources, you can actually just add both of them and whatever you play will come through your music section. Vice versa, if you have multiple browsers, which is going to be the next one. So like this is going to be, I'll just name it browser, even though I really only use Google Chrome for the most part. So I do have this up. And then same thing, I'll go back to the volume mixer, do Chrome, and then this is going to be number four. All right. So back to here, do a quick test, make sure it's engaged Real. the majority of it. Now I did miss. Okay. So it's my video on Elgato wave two. And you can see that's now coming through that browser for number four. Now you kind of get the idea of how these routing options work. So some programs have them built in to where you can just select the voice meter in two or three. Now I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing one because that's your microphone source, unless you really want to, and you want to have something come through with your mic. Like a really good example of this is a lot of people ask me what, you know, if I can play 
music through Discord. So if you really wanted to, you can select your music to that voice meter in one, have it come through here triggered, and not only will it play the hardware microphone, but it'll also play the VAIO input there. So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of flexibility, a lot of additional things that you can add to this. And then of course you have your regular voice meter input still, which I would always recommend as your default. So like it's selected as my default device voice meter input. So then all your regular desktop sounds that are defaulted will just come through here. And then of course you could just organize, you know, however you want for your other different programs. All right. So as far as the output goes again, multiple ways you can do this, but so my recommendation is really to keep it as limited as possible as far as going into your stream. Like I typically have all my music and desktop sounds uh, going into that B1 and then B2 separate from my mic that way I can add EQ, etc. Now you can individually add EQ with voice meter potato, which is a really good addition. So you have EQ here for each one of these, which is really nice. And then you also have some additional effects that voice meter banana doesn't have. So, but for your routing options, they would pretty much be the same. So if I wanted to keep B1 and B2, it's going to be your, um, an audio input capture into B1 that is called out B1. The name structure has always been weird with this, but again, you can rename these now. So it's really nice. Let's say you wanted something to individually route let's say from music into OBS. Now you can do that, but you just want to make sure that you're selecting audio input capture and not output capture. And the reason for this is because this essentially the output capture essentially acts as a audio device and not audio routing output from voice meter. I'm not going to explain that any further. I just know that that's how this works. So an example, would be if you wanted to use an audio output capture, you could keep in mind that this is acting like a device. So let's say I wanted music and we already know that the music source we're using is the voice meter in number three. So we'll select that, hit okay. And since it's already triggered here in B1, we'll deactivate that. If not, we'd have to mute this. And then let's play some music here. So you can see the music coming through there. Now the problem is that this has zero effect on the output to OBS because it's acting as its own device. So yes, you can use it, but what I would recommend is that. So what I would recommend is to use an audio input capture because it's going to give you the feed from voice Peter potato. So same thing. We'll go music here. All right. So we'll use a two since I'm not using that right now. Um, and then we'll hit play here. You're probably not hearing it. And that's because you have to make sure that this section number three is also triggered here. So you want to make sure you're triggering it wherever the routing is going down to the out to the master. And if you deselect a two, you select it and it's coming through. But again, that this gets pretty drastic in terms of how you're routing each element. So I would, again, I'll keep it pretty simple. I still like using B1, B2, but if you want to add some additional, you go A2 up to A5 and just get some, some crazy routing elements there. But doing this will actually still allow you to um, make adjustments to the individual inputs here. For example, using EQ, etc. So you can actually utilize that. It's really nice upgrade to the previous VB cable that we were using before. All right. So last thing I'm going to go over really quickly is just how to change the name of your sound sources. Like the, so instead of having that voice meter in one, 
or voice meter into, you can actually change it. So the easiest way to get there is right click here, go to open sound or go to open windows sound there. And then under playback, you'll select the one that you want to change. So let's say I wanted to change voice meter in to, to discord. So I still want to keep the in two cause I want to be familiar with what I'm picking. So we'll call this discord into let's say VM. Keep that voice meter in there. Hit apply. Hit okay. Close this out. You're gonna have to make sure you close the program completely. So let's quit discord there. Close this got too many windows open. Then once you open discord back, go to voice and video, it's changed your output device to discord in to VM. So this just makes it so much easier to tell what it is you're routing and what it is you're using instead of just that voice meter input voice meter aux. So yeah, again, this, this works really awesome. So yeah, hopefully that helped you out with some of the new routing stuff with the VAIO extension and gives you some freedom to be able to route, you know, different programs and et cetera. Um, it's just a, a great addition to voice meter potato, which was already great, but I think what they're doing in adding stuff like this is just giving you a lot of flexibility and then upgrading their, their software with the current models of windows and et cetera. So yeah, hopefully this helped you out. Be sure to like subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. Oh,